Okay, this is part three of my series on the great band, The Association. So on parts one and two, we, we pretty much covered everything up till the end of 1968, which covers their first four studio albums plus their greatest hits, which is this one. And as I said at the end, to close that last video, when a band does a greatest hits album, it seems to be an end of an era of sorts. And sometimes they don't ever get back to the hits that they had prior to that greatest hits album. And I would say that happened to the association. Now, one of the first things the association did in 1969 was they got another new member. Jules Alexander rejoined the band, making the band a seven piece band. They also got a gig doing the soundtrack for Goodbye Columbus, starring Ally McGraw and Richard Benjamin. This was a pretty big hit movie and kept them in the spotlight a little bit. So the theme song for the movie is called Goodbye Columbus, which was written by Jim Yester. And this was the band's last legitimate hit. Now, although it's fairly, it's a catchy song and it's fairly well known, it only charted at number 80 on the Billboard chart. It charted at number 22 on the adult contemporary chart. So you start to see the association being seen as more of an easy listening group as opposed to a rock group. And this being a, an establishment type of movie, I guess, uh, this was an easy rider. So the association was still aligned with that kind of music production, the easier listening uh, hit ballad type. But it's still a great song. And this soundtrack is not that hard to get. There are actually... There's an instrumental version of Goodbye Columbus and two other songs on here that are association songs. It's gotta be real. Hey, hey, hey. Who'd have thought you would ever stay through the taking to the giving? So one of the great advantages of getting Jules Alexander back in the band was he was probably their most prolific writer. So when they started working on this next album, the self-titled album called The Association, all seven members were writing. They had got rid of Bones Howell. The guy who recorded, who produced this, was a guy named John Boylan. So John Boylan was in a band called Apple Tree Theater with his brother Terry and had been doing some producing. So they retained him to produce this album, which I think was a great move. This is the best representation of what the band actually sounds like. And by 1969, the recording techniques were probably favored their vocal arrangements more. So this was recorded on a 16 track recorder. And uh, this is by far their most daring vocals of any of their albums and it's largely all written by them. They do play quite a bit on it, but they did retain some, some uh, session players on here as well, notably the Dillards. So it's got a, 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 some of the songs have a bit of a country bluegrass feel, but they run the gamut on this album. So let me open up the inside for you here. This, since it's called The Association, sometimes fans refer to it as the Stonehenge album. They treat us to a nice band photo with lyrics and this album charted at number 32 very respectable and the problem was is they could not buy a hit they had three singles released from this album all of them charted poorly if at all so in some ways they got their wish they were now an album oriented band <laughs> they were not a singles band anymore though they were trying to do both and at this point nobody in the band Nobody in the record company and nobody in their management could pick a hit single. And this would carry on for the next couple of years. But don't let that shy away from this album. I'm going to play for you a few of the great tracks from it. What would the words be if I found them? Would they sound like goodbye? Brothers sent away and sisters left to play with no one. So as you can hear on a song like Love Affair, uh, those vocal arrangements were just absolutely stunning. Uh, they do have a great potential single in the song Yes I Will. That one just didn't hit. It bubbled under, it did chart, but very low. 
And finally, the last single from their album, Dubuque Blues, another Jules Alexander original, which was more in the vein of a Tribe Stills and Nash type of song. Great song, but it just didn't click with the public. It charted on Cashbox, I think at number 84. Oh, definitely, most certainly I've got the Dubuque So as a live band, they were still at the top of their game. And I think with Alexander joining the band back, uh, both him and Larry could play lead guitar. It just gave them more depth on stage, another voice. So the association really excelled in their live shows, being able to get the audience involved, make the, the audience feel that it was an intimate setting. Uh, their shows were rather, still rather large shows, and they would have some little skits in between that uh, really made the audience feel a part of the show. So their next album, appropriately, was a live album. This is called The Association Live. It is a double album. This came out in 1970. This was one of the, their tours from 69. They were touring on the self-titled album. And I was, when I was younger collecting them, I was really surprised to see this album because I didn't think they were really known as a live band, but you get to hear them play and decide for yourself how good of players they were. And although this, this album, they did have to do a little sweetening after the fact, some of the recording techniques at the time weren't, it's hard to capture really pristine performances live. But this has got all the hits on it, except for everything that touches you. And it's a really lavishly packaged album. Nice photos of the band. It's got this nice embossed cover. And uh, let me play for you a couple of the hits, followed by some of the dialogue that they had with the audience during their shows. Everything that you profess to believe in your philosophies, look at that person and say, I love you. <laughs> Okay, so that last track you heard was Get Together. Let's Get Together, formerly a hit for the Youngbloods. Actually, it was a hit for the Youngbloods right during the time they were recording this. And the Youngbloods actually got that song from the association back in 66 when they used to do it live. So you can see that they're pretty well versed with a good amount of material, uh, diverse material on stage. When this album came out, for whatever reason, they didn't release a live single from this. Which I guess they could have done, but what they did instead was they went back to Kurt Betcher, their original producer. He had a song with an instrumental backing track called Just About the Same, and the association added their vocals to that, and that became their lone single in 1970. Now, unfortunately, that single didn't do well at all either even though it's pretty catchy, but I, I just didn't think it was a good enough song for them. I thought they could have chosen better. Uh, they, they, at this point, were really going into a dry spell with hits. And there was other hits they could have jumped on, like He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother, Joy to the World, I think, was offered them. They passed on that. And they ended the year uh, losing one of their main members. Russ Jagir decided to leave the band and do a solo album. So that starts the very final chapter of the association that we're going to cover in the next video here on Pop Goes the 60s. And I